I know how excited they are to like, you know, meet me, you know, and it's like I, I want to fulfill that excitement and make sure that they do remember that interaction because any of these people could be something crazy like mm-hmm. one day you know they, they could be a player themselves you know or, or they could do this and that dude that's and, how I, that's you and, and, <laughs> and, 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 and. what's up guys i'm jay harrison welcome back to queue up team mb's official podcast uh, where we take you inside the world of esports and gaming with the people who know best. If it's your first time joining us, we upload the audio version on podcast services every Monday and the video version on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Team Envy. Our special guests today need no introduction. We got Batman and Robin, <laughs> Mike, That's new. Rufail, Hastro, <laughs> and uh, returning guest, Mr. Nifty Noah. How are you doing, man? Good. How are you guys? Doing all right? Yep. Good. Good. We could probably pass for Batman, Batman and Robin. Robin. Though. I, I see. Yes. Look, I, can, I just I, see I Big Boss and like oh, it, Big man, Boss and Boy <laughs> Wonder. That's, that's, so that's when you're playing the games, that means you're Batman. But when you're like mm. managing the office, you're like Bruce Wayne. Mm. That's super cool. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Like, like, yeah, it. I like that. Man, yeah. More. <laughs> yeah. You could be in Robin though. I'm fine with that. Yeah. yeah. I don't look at titles. <laughs> <laughs> Which Robin though? That's a question. The coolest one. The coolest one. one. The one that becomes one. dark. Uh, that becomes Nightwing, in my opinion. Yeah, okay. He's always Fine. like, I'm I could see you becoming Nightwing. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. I'm down. <laughs> What's up, dude? Boot camp. You've been grinding. Yeah, the boot camp was fun. Um, it was really interesting because we didn't want to treat it like a normal Counter Strike boot camp, where often like you'll go to like Europe and you'll do like eight scrims a day against all the best teams and you just get like really burned out you know you do it for like seven to nine days that sounds grueling. Um, so this boot camp was like more like kind of just like meeting meeting the other guys being around them in person you know just learning and, and building like chemistry together mm-hmm. um while while still sticking to like a peaceful uh like scrim schedule so um that was kind of what this was for and also kind of just enjoying each other's time and and hanging out and doing stuff and going to dinner and things like that um and i'd say it was an absolute success (laughs) was it back to basics like fundamentals csgo 101 for some of the new guys coming in or were you able to kind of skip that and just kind of get to team synergy and strategy and stuff like that uh no i'd say it's a mixture of like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, not too much on the basics, but you know, having a reminder and, and reiterating all those things are, are always good because um, as a new team, like we need to embrace the fundamentals and make sure that we're understanding all of those things and we understand why we For need sure. them and, and how they work. So um, absolutely, we covered all of our bases. Nice. Um, what's the biggest takeaway you think from the camp? Uh, I think it confirmed my selection of our newest yeah. teammates. Yes. <laughs> Just learning about them, more about them as people um, and also playing with them in the in-person environment, um, kind of like we would on land. So um, I'm very happy with with who I chose. Did you bring like a behavioralist in? I've seen a guy like kind of like scouting the squad. No. Okay. So that was my mental trainer okay. uh, that I work with. So, and I wanted to introduce him to the rest of my team. And also if any of the guys had like any questions or um, things like that, because I think those people that, that work in that area are very, very helpful for professional players. Like I think every professional team should essentially have one that's working with them on like a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, gave him a chance to talk to my coach and, and things like that, just just to get any ideas out or you know get a feel for one another and things like that because um, he's really helped me. So, um, but also he wanted to get a better idea of like what it looked like in the office when my team and I were practicing. So mm-hmm. um, because he actually hasn't been able to experience that yet. So so you go to this guy like offsite, I'm guessing. Uh, we do mostly because he's in Frisco, so we mostly do like FaceTime okay. meetings. Um, but I've met him two or three times in person, so it's pretty awesome, man. Yeah, that's, uh, no. that's some captain level thinking right there. Well, yeah. Did he have any <laughs> feedback like for the team or like the organization in general? Because we're all walking around too. He's probably like, "What what is going on in this place?" Uh, I'm, I mean, he's found it like really interesting. Like he thought that we're doing like way better than what he would have initially thought with like the preconceived notion of just what an esports team looks like, how it operates in, in, in an office and stuff like that. So I think he was surprised mm-hmm. in a good way. So um, I mean, he likes it. This is this is really cool from his point of view. Sure, is that something you ever considered having like a behavioralist on staff that can just kind of mm, see and maybe actually, not even some so actually much for do the players. Have, we actually do have one that's available for every, for everybody, but mostly he's uh, started working with the fuel, the Dallas fuel. Nice. Uh, so we have uh, a guy named Don Kalkstein, goes by DK. 
He's a mental skills coach for the Dallas Mavericks and the Texas Rangers. Um, Big time. He, he won a World Series with the Boston Red Sox. So he's, uh, you know, essentially a, a mental coach for a lot of professional athletes. He's got years and years of experience. So we've used, utilized him with the Dallas Fuel and hope to integrate him more with, with our teams as they move to Dallas. We still don't have full teams, um, you know, kind of moved in and training together like we do with the Dallas Fuel just yet. But as we bring more of our Counter-Strike team here to Dallas, as we bring more of our Call of Duty team here to Dallas and other teams, um, he'll be available to work work with our players and brings, you know, some of the top tier experience yeah. in, in the sports and entertainment world. So, What do you think that guy's yeah. telling Dirk right now <clears throat> about... Been pass the torch at the mad race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pass yeah. the torch, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like just, just give it up, man. It's cool. You've had a good run. Like, <laughs> that's hard. Well, I, well, he's a, he's more of a mental skills guy, right? So I mean, he's probably he's probably telling Dirk, you know, giving him all the motivation he can, keep him going through the end of the season. You know, it's like that's true. It's just um, you, you know, when you have a twenty one year career, you probably still need a little bit of uh, motivation. You know, I'm, I'm assuming exactly. it's pretty tough if you've made a ton of money you've won an nba championship you've done all these things in your career uh how do you keep yourself going you know so somebody like dirk is you know, i'm trying to be very uh, serious in answering that yeah. question mm-hmm. right it's like you gotta you know it's always difficult when you get all these things you want in life and you you have all those things that you've wanted and you need and you kind of have everything locked in like how do you show up to work every day and keep yourself motivated to keep doing the same thing you've been doing for 21 straight years, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody is going to have difficulty doing that. And so for somebody like Dirk Nowitzki to do that with the Dallas Mavericks and w- with one team, you know, it's like that is re- repetition. And anybody can probably fall into uh, getting a little lazy if they've had to do that over and over and over and they already have everything that they need. And so uh, definitely I'm sure – DK's worked with with Dirk yeah. a lot in keeping his mind going and keeping him motivated to show up to work every day. That's it amazing. That, hell of a process. Yeah, and that we have that resource available to to envy in Dallas Field. Like mm-hmm. that's that's pretty nuts to think about. I mean, that, one day we'll be kind of at that legacy and have that kind of history. But but having someone who has that experience working with you know these yeah long term pros. Uh, DK's a man, and you know there's a there's a reason Cuban keeps him around. You know with his team and. Uh, flies him around wherever he needs to fly him, and uh, he's a great guy, man. So sometimes when we have to take DK's time, uh, you know, he's got to get back to me because he's like, eh, you know, the Mavs want me here or the Rangers want me here. and I got Dirk on the other he's line. Gotta, he's he's got to fit us into the schedule, so we always have to schedule with him ahead of time, you know, uh, when we need him to work with the fuel or when we, we're going to need him to work with Envy. 20 years, it's going to be flip-flop. They're going to be like, hey, guys, sorry, I'm busy with, with <laughs> yeah. Envy and Dallas Fuel. I'll get yeah. back to you, uh, Mavs and Rangers. Yeah. Hold on. So one of the things I think is I see like it, it, mentally it's probably all still there, but like physically the body just can't hold up. Did yeah. you ever experience that with like Call of Duty? Because you were a player um, and then you kind of moved to the business side. Did you ever have that feeling like, nah, I still got it. You, maybe you probably still feel like that. Yeah, like, I, I mean, I mean, there. like there's it's real like physical. There are physical pains that come with, you know, competing at the highest level in esports. I mean, I've definitely felt things in my wrists before and in my forearms. And, um, you know, I've definitely felt some kinds of you know eye fatigue and stuff like that where you just you get headaches or, or whatever because you're sitting in front of a screen staring at it all day long so um there are definitely physical downfalls i guess of being an esports pro uh a lot of players have it different because just the like some players like let's say in counter-strike for example some people some players use their arm to swipe their mouse like they're from their elbow mm-hmm. some players use their wrist so it just different differs player to player so um, I've seen players have, you know, really big complications with their wrists and their their elbows, and um, it just depends on the movements that different players use. But it, it and it really the games that um, have a big effect, like League of Legends. I think you click a lot more in League of Legends, like mm-hmm. you're clicking a, a ton in yeah, that game. So so stop. that that movement of your index finger clicking the mouse button puts a lot of strain like through your forearm and. Um, you know that that was one where I definitely saw a lot of strain on players and, and injuries in their in their arms and wrists. I think League of Legends is probably the one I've seen the most out of. Um, Counter Strike, you have a little bit of that, um, but not not nearly as much as like the ones where you're actually. I think clicking is yeah. actually yeah, Starcraft. The ones where you're yeah Starcraft um, MOBA any MOBA yeah. Just, I mean your your left your left wrist on the keyboard tapping all the buttons a lot. 
it, 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 you know, you can, you can have some long term complications and, uh, yeah. And these are developing like in people's twenties. This is not like 50 year old men. This is like, yeah, <laughs> but, happening but at imagine, a very young age. you know, imagine what you what those players are going to feel like. We haven't seen it yet when they're 50 years old. Right. Like, mm-hmm. you know what we haven't seen, like what that's going to look like. I don't think it's necessarily as serious as taking six concussions in an NFL career. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not that, it's not that serious, but at the same time, like, you know, it's something to pay attention to and for us to make sure that our players are, you know, getting treated whenever they start feeling mm-hmm. anything like that. So the, is there like sports science, like where like medicine and like rehab, does that like exist on the spectrum of gaming? Is there like yeah. therapists, <clears throat> like physical therapists specifically designed for esports? Yeah, there's some that are kind of rearing their heads out there. I mean, I, you know, um, I don't think that somebody has to come in and say, oh, I'm an esports, you know, yeah. uh, I have an esports medical practice for yeah. physical injuries in esports. Yeah. I mean, I would still trust a doctor who's been doing it for 30 years or something, you know, with everyone than I would somebody who's like, I just specialize in esports, mm-hmm. right? Um, I would just trust, you know, kind of the doctors who've been doing it for, for plenty of time. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that's the best resource you have yeah. is anybody who specializes in, carpal tunnel syndrome or uh, wrist injuries or, you know, anything that has to do with your your joints and arthritis and everything else. I mean, I went to my doctor. So I had a, like a pain in my shoulder and I went to the doctor and uh, I was like, hey, this has been here for a while. He's like, OK, what do you do? What's your you know, what kind of activities do you do? And he's like, do you game? And I was like, yeah. He's like, do you play with a controller or a mouse and keyboard? And I was like, mouse and keyboard mostly. And he's like, oh, yeah, you need to like let like stop that for about two weeks <laughs> i was like wow i'm surprised you isolated that like and he's just a regular family practice doctor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah doctors are smart guys yeah yeah so we need like some finger weights in the office so we could just keep you know keep yeah a lot up. of players use uh use different things like uh you know I've, we've had plenty of players in our organization that have used like uh, wrist strengthening tools um stress balls i mean uh, we uh, players have taken it upon themselves to like do some of these things for themselves. And so just like Noah is doing things for, you know, his mental skills and his, uh, and getting his own coaching for that. We've had players go out and seek doctors for their physical, uh, upkeep. So I think that's, that's really important and players should always take it upon themselves to do that. We do a little bit of, uh, consulting with our players on that stuff, but, um, I think players themselves really have to go out and make sure that they're taking care of themselves because every player is different. Noah, any specific physical training exercises you do? No specific physical training exercises. Um, mostly, it really is all like for the mind, really. I mean, if you're interested in in working out and stuff like that, like that's great. And honestly, I'm not really opposed to it. Um, but I would absolutely want to work with like a physical trainer because I, I don't want to like try to self teach, you know, uh, that process because um, I just don't feel comfortable with it. But um, yeah, no, it's definitely more about like the mental side and like being mindful towards towards like everything essentially. Um, I want to say like, did, have you guys ever seen the like finger resistance bands? Is it like you like stretch yeah, it out you, like there's that? like five finger holes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you just like stretch. Dude, some of those are so hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think Steve Floyd like made very, one of using very, it on a documentary. It looked like he was kind of like grabbing a butt or something. And yeah, like just, yeah, yeah. But those are like very difficult. Like, <laughs> yeah. I think I even tried like the lowest, like the easiest one, and it was just like. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like back in uh, Renegades when I did that. Speaking yeah. of the mind, you were in Miami recently and not to play. You were uh, no, yeah, an analyst. No, was, caster? Caster uh, analyst? Analyst. analyst. Yes. Right on. Yep. Tell us about that. Um, that was, it was honestly an insane experience. Like I got to see how the other side operates essentially, yeah. you know, because it's like I think there are a lot of players, but also a lot of fans that don't recognize like the work that, that that whole side, like the analyst crew, the the host, the reporters, the casters, like all the work that they actually do and and what they have to go through to, to make an event really good, you mm-hmm. know, and, and make it really good on camera. So I learned a lot about that. And, and also a lot of the guys that were working in those positions, you know, are people that are at most Counter-Strike events. And I'm already friends with all of them, but I got to know them on another level as well. Um, you know, because when you work with people, it's a little different. So... Uh, it, it was honestly 
a great time. Uh, I got a lot of like really good feedback from fans and just also, you know, the other talent, um, you know, saying like I did a great job, but also like good feedback that could help me, you know, that I was receptive towards like, oh, you know, you can maybe do this a little bit differently. And I was like, yes, thank you. You know, like I appreciate that. Um, so it's like that whole experience was awesome. Um, and there was also like a, like a small highlight of the event that actually wasn't streamed where it was called like beat the pro. And I got to like play on stage for just like a couple minutes mm -hmm. um, with all the fans in the crowd kind of like watching. Um, we picked like three different fans that I played against in this like fun little arcadey map per se, kind of like a custom game or something. Um, and I got to play each fan for like one minute. And you were just ripping them kids. And they were going to get prizes. <laughs> they were going to get prizes regardless, too. And I was like, well, I know I'm not losing. <laughs> Shut them down. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm going to try, but like, I'm not going to lose. Um, but it was like, I was able to use an AK for like the first 40 seconds. And then the last 20 seconds, I'd use Zeus. Okay. So it basically confirmed the fact that they were going to kill me. <laughs> so, and it was like, whoever got the most kills got like this prize or, you know, whatever. Um, but that was a lot of fun because just being in uh, an American arena you know and then after that all the fans you know wanted to get signs uh, signings from me and pictures and have like conversations and ask me questions and like i loved that part of it as well you know it kind of made me like oh, i wish i was here as a player you know mm -hmm. like um but it was incredible i loved it i wish i got to go out in miami so can you see yourself later when you hang up the jersey is that like the future for you maybe uh that cannot be decided <laughs> i see you as like a tony romo like tony romo is a great <laughs> caster analyst now that he's kind of done and i could totally see that for yeah him. i mean i can say that That's what i did i can yeah, say yeah. that i could absolutely do that um but also i i feel like by then i can see also like 55 other doors that are open mm. you know for things that i could do well that that experience is so valuable because mm -hmm. you know I, I did the same thing i played call of duty professionally then i you know i coached our team but actually simultaneously like while playing and coaching at one point i was also casting mm -hmm. a, lot the, a lot of the events and so i played coached uh cast it i was a broadcaster for all the call a lot of call of duty tournaments tournaments and then uh you know obviously then i started managing the team and then it, you know kind of just went to as it grew ownership and you know, I mean, you're even doing video production on the back end too at the same time. Yeah, and I, yeah, I was doing some, <laughs> I was doing some producing, and then it's a one man uh, band, and then you know now it's like now I'm producing events, right? Like our you know first major event here in Dallas is Ultimate Weekend coming up, and you know getting that whole experience, um, kind of 360 around the esports industry is super valuable. I think it, you know, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I think it's it's been given me, it's given me. Um, a lot more perspective and understanding of how things are ran across the entire industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and there aren't many people out there who have all those skills and experience. I mean, you probably count them on two hands uh, throughout the whole industry. And so, you know, from playing, coaching, casting, managing, owning, producing, like those things, those skills right there are invaluable. And so the more like players can get that as they're playing or, you know, as they exit the, their playing careers and getting more of that experience, they're a lot more likely to make waves in the industry and pioneer more things. And I think, you know, it's great that Noah was doing that. That's why I was kind of asking him before we started recording, like, how was it? Like, you know, what did you think? And, you know, get excited about that stuff because that's the stuff that will make you uh, have a really long career in, in the industry that you love. So, so do you think, uh, I mean, we've heard a lot about the grind of becoming a pro player and how much time you have to put in to train and practice and, and perform, but media obligations, being a personality, you know, doing all these other things can potentially take away from that in some aspect. Uh, do you think it, while it's undeniably valuable for your long term career, do you feel like it may affect your short term performance? Um, I look at it as additive. Everything, everything is additive. Like if you want to be a legend in the esports industry, you're yes, you can just play. You could just play and win a lot and be a great competitor, and that's great. But if you are that a great competitor and and win a lot, but you're also doing what Noah does or did this past weekend, you're casting and you're producing content and you're connecting with the fans and you're doing all these things, you are that much more legendary than the other guy because uh, he just played and won and that was it and didn't connect with the fans and didn't do all these things. So. Uh, I feel like if you want to be the 
truest legend of legends, right? You need to do all of those things. And that is how you create, um, you know, something that people will remember you for forever. That's how you become the Batman of esports. <laughs> yeah. The legend. Yeah. Yeah. So, you so, you know, when people, it's funny now because I didn't even think about it. I wasn't, you know, I didn't have this goal of doing everything. You but, had no examples of but, that either. Right. Yeah. So I just, but I just did it. Like if somebody asked me to do something, I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. You know, it just happened. You know, just kind of, it really did just kind of happen for me. People would ask me to do things. I say, yeah, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll do it. I'll, I'll try that out. I'll do these things. I'll travel all over the world. I'll travel 200 days a year for three straight years. Mm. The you know, power of yes. And I, and That's I a book. Did, and the I power did of yes. Yeah. I mean, on average, I probably traveled 150 days a year throughout my whole career for the last 13 years. So I was gone a lot and doing all these things that I could do and seeing the world. But, um, you know, I just did it. And so now when people approach me, they're like, oh, my God, dude, you've done everything. Right. Like people, you know, whether it's like people coming into the space, new investors or whatever, when they look me up and they say, wow, you've this guy's really done it all. Well, you know, I have, but I didn't really set out to do that with a goal. Right. Mm-hmm. Like it's it, I just did it, you know, and I feel like that has just helped. Unfolded that it's way. helped me a lot. Yeah. Just unfold that way. And it helped me a lot to get credit, you know, nowadays. Right. Uh, with everything I'm doing now. And so I feel like every player should seize that opportunity to also answer your question. Um, it's like if players are interested in doing that, it's like you also have to have some time management skills, um, but also it kind of depends mm. on who you are as a person. Like I touched on this uh, a while ago where it's like for me, I like to feel like I'm busy. You know, I like to feel like I have not just just Counter-Strike going on, you know, just playing the game. You know, it's like because when I have a bunch of other things going on, it influences more creative thought, you know, and more more productive and and positive thought as well. Just on like things that I want to do or things that I am doing. How can I do them better? You know, things like that. Um, So uh, doing like those additives are are very good for for someone if you like embrace them the right way. So, Sir, I've seen you at events and you always make time for the fans. You always stop, you shake hands, you take pictures, autographs. Kang said you have kind of an interesting reason behind that. Is there a reason that like you give that time to every single person? Mm. I don't know. I think, I mean, I talked about it. I, I think I made like a LinkedIn post or something this past weekend where I said, it was like the first ever LinkedIn post I've ever made. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on there for like six years. So, uh, you know, it's, it's people ask me like, what's the one thing that's contributed to your success? And, uh, I always say just treat people well, you know, it's because that's what I believe in, man. I'm just, I grew up kind of with the morals that, you know, you should always treat people with respect and treat people well and be nice to everybody. And I try to do that the most I can. Um, and you know, sometimes it doesn't always work just because you, you have a lot going on or, or whatever. But yeah, when it comes to the fans, I've never like, I've never really felt like I shouldn't shake somebody's hand or talk to them. So I've always just done it um, and, and really stopped to take the time to do it. And so um, even the optic fans. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I mean, really, honestly, like I'll stand, you know, it's funny. Like I'll do this all the time. This is kind of one of my signatures at events. Uh, You know, I'll just be, I just stand in the crowd a lot and I watch the matches. Like if like, you know, in Fort Worth, our team was playing optic that night. Um, and I was just kind of sitting in the crowd with everybody else and standing next to the crowd. And, you know, I'm standing right next to a couple of guys wearing optic jerseys and I, I'll just tap them on the shoulder and be like, Hey, you're wearing the wrong Jersey, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And just like mess with the fans, you know, the other teams or whatever. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's fun, man. It's just, it's just, uh, I always try to make sure that everybody's having a good time. So, man. um, always, always there to talk or say, Hey, and fans can stop me anytime. Right what was your reason? Kang, what was your reason? We'll, we'll stop. We'll stop Kang. Cameraman what, Kang, what, what, was, what, was the reason, what was the reason that I have to, to stop? I think you said something about how, like, you know, the kid takes his time to talk to you and you can just talk to the kid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if somebody's going to take their time to talk to me, then I'm going to take my time to talk to them. Especially I mean, that's, the that's kid, respect man. thing. And yeah. if it's, especially if it's, especially if it's young people, because that's the other thing, you know, it's like, I've, I've actually been thinking about this a lot because I just became a parent. Uh, you know, the one thing in your life, right? The one thing in your life that if you're going to have a child, right? If you're going to bring a child into the world, I think the biggest problem with the world today is that we're losing sight of taking care of our children and teaching them, you know, the just the core basic things of how to be a good human being. Hmm. And I think a lot of, I think we're, the world is really losing sight of that in a way where uh, being a parent isn't, necessarily like the ultimate responsibility anymore and i believe that being a parent is the ultimate responsibility so 
Um, you know, I feel like just taking the time to make sure that young people get a sense of uh, good humanity is really, really important. It's probably the most important thing to me. So especially young people, if they're coming in, and we have a lot of young people who pay attention to uh, this sport. And so, um, yeah, just, just taking the time to make sure that young people understand that you're listening to them, uh, you hear them, uh, you care about them, and um, these are things that you should be an example of. So, mm, yeah. Um, yeah, that's important to me. I mean, if you think back, <clears throat> any of you guys here, think back to the, the, the most impactful things in your life and, and what stuck with you. It's always going back to stuff that happened to you as a kid, and that dictated instances or, or engagements for you later on in life. And, I mean, those are things that – I remember that kid that you probably talked to that you probably forgot about at some point when you after you talked to him because you talked to like five kids. Each of those kids will remember that time for pretty much the rest of their lives, mm-hmm. and that can impact how they view the world. It's a minute of your time that, but that can set them on a path for their life. Yeah, or, it's like yeah, it's important yeah, to see both everything. sides of like everything. Um, but it's like people will never forget how you made them feel. So when it comes to like fans and, and engagements and interactions like that, it's like that's something that I just love. Because uh, there, I know how excited they are to like you know meet me, you know, and it's like I, I want to fulfill that excitement and make sure that they do remember that interaction because any of these people could be something crazy like mm-hmm. one day, you know, they they could be a player themselves, you know, or or they could do this and that. Dude, that's and, how I. That's you and, and, <laughs> and, and, and inspire. You were Fifteen and the, the, the whole story of like. That, that, Did he come up for your autograph? No, 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 no. I love, I love that. That just like, dude, he the, just like threw the it. The story up, like, is like, like Nifty like showed up as this, this random amateur kid at a Call of Duty tournament, like St. Louis or somewhere where we were, and okay. like he was just on, he was on a, a team that was not supposed to beat our team in the open bracket, and they, he he just like clutched up, beat our team. I literally picked Nifty up on my shoulders. And like carried him out of the venue on my shoulders. <laughs> this young kid. We have this picture of us where he looks like he's a baby. <laughs> and this is like, how old are you now? Twenty one. Yes, yeah, so this is like six or seven seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. And 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 dude, and like I just like talk to him. Like, dude, you're you're awesome. Like, keep going. I don't know if I made an impact on you at that tournament, but you know, at the no. end of the day, you had the drive to like keep going, and here you are, like sitting next to me. It's crazy. Yeah, no, there there was definitely an impact, not just from you, but from other people that event as well. Because like yep. there were other people that talked to me, like you know, like Clayster at the time. Yep. Was like, you know, he was like the man. So, I mean, Clayster, for example, like he, you know, talked to me for like a little while, and I was just a kid. I was just sitting there. I was just like listening. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I tweeted out a picture of like the picture of Nifty and I outside. And I'm like, this is the kid, you know, and like, you know, I try to give him some motivation to like yeah. keep going because he had a lot. He had a lot of talent, obviously. And so, um, yeah, I was right. Yeah. So that's one of the so, <laughs> so literally like adding on to everything that Mike said about, you know, why he interacts with the fans or how and what are the reasons? It's like it's all of that. Plus, you know, just knowing that like anyone could become something crazy and you can never predict it, you know, and it's just like you can influence them in that mm-hmm. way, you know? And again, just don't never forget how you made them feel. So it's like something that's really important. I mean, I think feeling um, a certain way in these events, there, there's something about events that, that you can't get from anything else, right? You go to an event, the energy from everybody, the seeing the broadcast on stream, um, whatever it is, whether you're playing or if, whether you're in the audience, events make memories, um, so you get as a player getting hyped up for an event, like one of the things, um, that probably is the most nerve wracking is, is potentially the moment before you get on stage. Um, are there things that you do to kind of hype yourself up to get ready for an event? Yeah. So, uh, I am personally working on some of those things right mm-hmm. now because I haven't, uh, competed at an event with this set roster. And since I've been working on certain things individually to develop that like pregame routine, that is a set thing and that I do that because I never really did it before. I, I kind of like did things here and there, but I didn't uh, like commit to it. And a lot of players don't, you know, and it's like, I think, oh, it is just like, I, like I, you know, there should be something right that I do every single time. And, and there are some players that do stuff and maybe it's not that serious. Maybe they just like do five push ups. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like that's mm-hmm. and that's what they get do. The blood to, that's what they do to get into the game or something, you know, but definitely it's like right before the game, if you don't have butterflies, even as like the top player in the world, you know, then like you're just bored, 
you know like it doesn't like as soon as the game starts though you know you become ice cold and you're just you're there to play you you reinforce everything that you practice everything that you've done and all the all the work that you've put in all that stuff but before the game it's like yeah you know you want to feel that i have a good example because this just happened in our boot camp like last week you know i walked out of my office and like our whole counter-strike team is like arm in arm huddled up with each other out here in the office. And I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> like, this, I was like, what's, what's going on right now? <laughs> and then like, I, I was talking to Noah later. I'm like, he was, I was like, what's that about? You guys are like huddled up in the middle of the office, all holding each other. And he's like, yeah, because I wanted to make sure that we did that now, because if we did that right before a match, it would just feel weird and, you know, kind of awkward. So we want to just go ahead and practice that now, like, you yeah. know, pregame huddle because, I don't want it to feel weird before we go into a match. I want everybody <laughs> just to know that we can we can put our arms around each other and talk and have a huddle before yeah. we have a match. And so That's we're awesome. practicing that now. And I thought that was genius. And I was like, yeah. All right, well, carry on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> carry, on, on. carry on. Do your thing. So, yeah, it'll be I, like- I literally walked out of my office and I was like <laughs> I was like, just stop. Like, oh, man, do I have to, do I have moment, to like, kind of creep back into my office right now? It's like, it's intervention a really, going on? really intimate moment with our yeah, Counter-Strike team going on in our office, you know? Yeah, and it's funny because it's, like, first scrim, it'll still be, like, 4 or 5 o'clock, and, like, everyone's still in the office. I was like, look, I don't care who's in the office. Just, you know, when we you know, when we do our mantra, we do it loud. Okay, period. Yeah, and then, so, like, you know, I'm literally, then I went back in my office, closed the door, and then I hear, like, <laughs> one, two, three, Henry, Team Envy, and I'm like all right <laughs> you can have that energy takes. here in <laughs> this but, yeah. then you can definitely yes. do it like at an so, event on stage yeah, so, yeah. this is probably the most awkward place <laughs> you could have done. yeah and and you know what like what i loved is that all of my teammates embraced it just as much as i conveyed how we should so that was like perfect but like just as we do with anything it's like we need to be able to practice it before we actually get into the place where we need to use it you know and so i thought about all those things and it's like huddles for one i was like wait we can't like go to EPL, you know, two weeks from now. And that's our first huddle. You know what I mean? Like, it's just not going to work. It's not, it's going to be weird. Um, you know, especially for somebody like Sam, like that was, I told him the day before we did our first huddle, I was like, you're going to do something new tomorrow that you've never done before. And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was like, so, you know, be ready. But, and he loved it too. He, he had a huge smile on his face. He was always one of the people that was like yelling the most in those huddles. So he was enjoying it. Um, but yeah, it's like, we need to practice something like that. And yeah. To put awesome. that in perspective for everybody that doesn't know who Sam is, if, if you're listening, uh, Sam is 16 years old, right? Mm -hmm. He's still 16. Yep. yep. Crazy. And he is, he has never played on a professional counter-strike stage and, you know, at a live event. So he uh, he's incredibly talented, and we we sign him to our roster and believe in him, and we're trying to you know the struggle right now is to make sure that he's prepared you know to go up on a stage and and play to his full potential because the kid is amazing, and um, so just put that in the con put the context in, into that what what Noah's talking about. He's super young, and you know we we're building a lot of hype around him, and the kid's amazing. So just giving him the extra tools that. He needs and the preparation he needs to be comfortable on the stage. Noah, you're a hip hop head. Is music a part of your pregame ritual? Do you have like a pregame playlist? Uh, it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore though. Um, it's like if I listen to music, it's when I'm. It could be like you know when I get out of the shower or if I'm just hanging out, you know whatever it is. But I used to listen to it like when I'm warming warming up, like playing deathmatch and stuff like that. But um, I, I noticed that like I actually kind of focused in and, and started feeling it more so when I was just listening to the game sound, just mm -hmm. like, you know, just like essentially getting ready. It's like if I'm warming up before a match or something or, or even like ears practice, on alert rather than. Yes. It's yeah. just like I'm hearing the sounds in the game. I'm recognizing all these sounds because I know that I'm about to hear them when I actually play. You know, rather than just like blasting my ears with like rap music, you know, and it's mm -hmm. like, I mean, I love that, but it, it just. It was like it was too weird of a transition to go straight from that into the game. Mm -hmm. So um, that's like something that I focused on that, you know, I was just conscious of it and I acknowledge it. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should try not doing it. But um, yes, I mean, I love music. I love rap and, you know, all the time when I'm just chilling and relaxing, like I'm listening to music. Um, but it, it's interesting that it's something that I've kind of like learned. It's like when my ear and it's different with other people because i think people are able to listen to music and still have creative thought 
you know, or, or, or maybe think about things thoroughly. Mm -hmm. But it's like, for me, it doesn't really work that way. Cause it's just like, I'm just hearing the lyrics. I'm listening to music. I'm, I'm like vibing. Most of my music is fun. So, you know, I'm just like, I'm like just feeling it. Right. Um, but it's like, so I've listened to less music actually, because I'm just thinking more. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So I yeah. never did that. I never listened to music before yeah. games because you have to manifest what's about to happen. Yeah. You know, you, you really, you, you really do. And, and a lot of, uh, at least my pregame thoughts were, I bet you it's this way for him too. Maybe you can confirm it, but a lot of my pregame thoughts were situations. I would just run through situations in my head. Like if this happens in the game, then I need to do this. So that's visualization. I, if, if, if this yes. is going on, I need a position here, right? Like, I would just, I mean, I would be running through hundreds of scenarios through my head before a match. Like, these are my opponents. I know they're going to do this, right? Like, mm -hmm. if they do this, then I do this. It's just like, that is the what's going through my head. It's just, you know, everything that I've prepared for, just running through everything again and going through the scenarios of what's about to happen in the game. Because, you know, this, you have to do you have split second reactions. So if that happens, I need to do this. And your brain just has to be able to click it, right? And and um so i would never ever listen to music before games or i would just probably just do this i just bow my head and just think you know mm -hmm. of what's about to happen and i think that's really important and some every every player is different some people do listen to music and perform phenomenally well mm -hmm. it's just everybody's different but i would just try to manifest my outcome right there then and there before the match even happens absolutely it's all about like finding what works best for you and it's like literally what you just talked about is visualization and like that is so important just in like everything that you do but also like mm -hmm. as a competitor it helps so much because if you've played that scenario over in your head mm -hmm. then more than likely when you actually see that situation in the game it'll fall out or fold out exactly like that you know yeah. and you'll already know what to do like you'll already have that like enhanced knowledge that you've created yourself you know of like how you would react or mm -hmm. what it's what it's going to look like and you know maybe maybe you hit the shot just because you imagined it beforehand so it's kind of crazy how that works. Mm -hmm. Again, that applies to a lot more than just game. Yes. Like when we do events or something like that, I'm always running through these different scenarios of contingency plans, what's going to happen if, if X, Y, Z. And once you do that, you're basically creating experience in your head and, you know, in muscle memory without actually doing it, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. pretty interesting. So yep. yeah. coming from a basketball background, I found that a certain genre of music may help or hinder my performance. So before a game, I'm going to date myself with this reference, but Little John Crunk Juice. They're like, <laughs> okay, yeah. Like <laughs> listening to that before a game, I'm clanking shots off the backboard. Like I'm just trying to go so hard because the music is just so upbeat. And like I, I had one of my worst games listening to that album before a game. So I was like, all right, no more Little John before games. But yeah, if it was more mellow. Um, even if music was playing in the arena, because they always have music bumping and you're doing like layup line or whatever warm ups. But I was always in tune with my players. I was looking at their eyes. I was seeing it. Were they nervous? Were they scared? I was trying to get on the same page with my team and just make sure everybody was prepared to go to battle, basically. So I can relate to I imagine that you if you're saying. experienced enough in in like just using visualization or, uh, you know, imagining what the scenario would look like in your example, like basketball, like a professional player could just be like warming up and he can like even hear the sounds of like a crowd chanting or or you know like the sounds or the music playing or the commentators over over the right. stadium you know i imagine he can hear all those things and still at the same time be able to focus on just hitting the ball in the net you, you every have to block time. it all out Absolutely. yeah it's yeah. like and like that's that's just so crazy i feel like that's so important you know for for being able to focus in on what you're about to do mm -hmm. yeah so uh, a thing that we're getting into now, especially with Overwatch League, is having these these hype walkouts and 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 with music playing. <laughs> you you don't really do that in in the majority of other esports right now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but mm, yes, Counter Strike yes. majors, yeah, you have, yeah, okay. you have walkouts. So a lot of Counter Strike events have. What what do you want for your walkout? Uh. I don't know something little Uzi vert. <laughs> little Uzi vert. <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> right Uzi vert. Yeah, um, true. What's yeah, your walkout song? Like, yeah, very vibey. Um, I'll, I'm I'm old school. I'm, <laughs> I'm like a ACDC Thunderstruck kind yeah. of guy. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yes, I could see yeah. that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I mean that, that that song is like. Uh, I mean, I've done. I've had walk. I've had walkouts to that before. I played. I played soccer. Uh, my high school soccer team was actually. I played soccer my whole life through through college and. Um, 
my high school prep team was we were number one ranked spring team in the country two years in a row played in two two state championships and won two lower state championships in south carolina and we were we were just a monster high school soccer team and we we walked out to thunderstruck and it was i felt like you know our team just like embodied that <laughs> yeah. song mm-hmm. and when we yeah. came out of the field like when the, when the opening whistle went like we were we were on it and so you know that was that was always like uh walking on the field no matter how big the crowd was there to watch us we were we were always uh pretty pumped up so that's my yeah. jam so now you're a texas guy or you've been a texas guy you mm-hmm. drive a pickup truck mm-hmm. is there country in that pickup truck is there country in it yeah country music uh oh yeah 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 yeah. what do you listen to like garth brooks i'm a george Strait kind of <laughs> <Okay>. guy <laughs> yes. yeah 90s country man i'm like i'm like kind of a soft softy man you know yeah so i mean i, I sing cross my heart by george Strait and my daughter all the time <laughs> i carry it around cute, the house yeah. and sing that to her you've got that blaring while you're like out in the back of your house I put it over. Yeah, we have like a, a speaker system in ceiling, you know, throughout the house, and so um, I just put it in one of the zones in the house on the Sonos and play it and sing sing George Strait songs to my daughter as I, I walk around the house. I know that's su- amazing. super soft. You got a cowboy but, hat? Uh, I do, but it's like from my childhood, uh, so I haven't bought a new cowboy yeah. hat yet. Uh, but we'll have to. I'm, I'm working on buying a ranch, so we'll see. When I buy that thing, we'll get a cowboy hat, and I'll invite, really? you, guys, I'll nice. invite you guys ranch? out. Nice pair of little boots. A little small ranch. Uh, That's what ranch. Those are, those are the goals, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, those, are, those are the goals right now, so if, if, hopefully you win more tournaments and allow me to do that. <laughs> Let's go, Nifty. <laughs> I got you got to pay I for it. I got you, bro. I support your dreams. <laughs> you support mine. I got you. Uh, yeah, I want to. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, I mean, one, one day here, I'll, I drive a pickup truck, and I will, I will have, wear a cowboy hat. But, yeah, country, <laughs> music, con- country music goes. Right on. Um, Yep. The retired Kenny, badass. Kenny Rogers, you know, <laughs> that, that's where stuff is, is right up my alley. Old country. Right. We got some uh, rapid fire questions for you guys before we get out of here. If I could find them on my notes. Justin hates music, by the way. Oh, yeah. And um, I don't hate music. Freaking hate I it. just don't. He's the only person I've ever said who's like, I, don't, I just don't like music. It's not. It, so it, music is. car humming music, on the way home. That's true. For like um, <laughs> you know what song's been stuck in my head for the last literal month and a half probably what's that uh the fuel house jack in the box uh intro <laughs> not even joking yeah if you guys haven't seen one. that yet go watch the fuel house uh <laughs> intro as well as the episodes coming out uh those are on dallas fuels twitter account as well as like jack in the boxes it's that song i cannot get out of my head like i'm, I'm okay with it but I also can't get it out of my head. Man, I get nursery rhymes stuck in my head right now because <laughs> my daughter like listens to these. Was it Baby rhymes. Shark? What's that? What's the no, baby shark? No, now it's in my head. Shark did, did. No. <laughs> I, we, don't, we don't listen to that one, but it's more like I don't know, man. Like phonics songs. Oh. Like M is for monkey. <laughs> mm. <laughs> monkey. Like that's. that's I imagine I, you could I, recite like fifteen jamming, different ones dude. right now. Like yeah, I could. Forward. I could literally keep going. That's amazing. So I like. Yeah. I mean, I just jam these nursery rhymes with my daughter. Like all day long and for driving like she's listening to them you know in the back of the truck so man i'll, I'll tell you it's gonna be stuck in my head all day <laughs> thanks guys all right <laughs> rapid fire uh the fighting game you're best at mm, killer instinct one two 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 yeah i don't play fighting games <laughs> <That'll> play. <laughs> none none fighting games. None. none uh tupac or biggie 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 Ah, you East Coast boys. <laughs> you just don't need Tupac all day. Visors or fanny packs? Visors. Fanny packs. Fanny packs. Fanny packs. <laughs> Visor. Wait, what was your answer? Fanny packs. Fanny packs. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> uh, we'll love this one. Favorite anime? I don't watch anime. <laughs> I, don't. I knew you were going to love this one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've literally watched like maybe like two in my entire life. Pokemon? Um, just say Dragon Ball Z. Just say Dragon Ball Z. Dude, I'm 35. Yep. Like, just, is, is Naruto <laughs> considered an anime? Yes. Pokemon like, just Naruto, came yeah. in when I was, but I was yeah. like, you know, an athlete when I was younger and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I just didn't didn't watch, didn't do the Pokemon thing. Yeah, but I, I did play Pokemon Go, and I, I had a good time playing that's that. That's true. Yeah, and I was like 33. So, pineapple on pizza? Yes or no? No. Negative. Yes. Two no's. Resounding no's. Yeah. Yeah. Negative. I'll fourth that. Uh, if you didn't live in Texas, where would you want to be, or where would you want to reside? Mm. Could be out of the country. Yeah. Mm. Australia. Yeah. Sydney. Really? Somewhere coastal. I don't know. <laughs> like uh, the beach. Yeah. Like some Fiji. Yeah. Somewhere like that. <laughs> Good pick. Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. Fiji. Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Stro already answered this one, uh, but this one's for Nifty because he, uh, he's a hip hop head. Country mm. music, yes or no? Final yes, answer. I was born upstate New York, so. Oh, upstate New York is like all farmland, right? It's not. Big, uh, it's not big city living. Mostly, it's yeah, it's mostly country, but there are like small cities. You know, yeah. like my city has probably like thirty thousand people in it, but you know, surprising. right on the yeah. outskirts. You know, surprising. So you upstate can do the watermelon crawl. I crawl that either. Either. You, yeah. you, could, you could do the watermelon crawl. Uh, no. No. Oh, do you look at the neon moon? These are like all I don't songs. Know probably what any of that means. Th- these are probably songs before he was even born. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, Shro mm-hmm. knows what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, I know Shro. You got to get out of here, man. You got uh, business to take care of. So good. Uh, we appreciate you guys coming in and yep. uh, spending time with us again. Yeah. Um, we'll anything you want to tell our fans before we send off? Watch Envy Counter Strike. They're yeah. com- coming up in EPL pretty Exciting. soon. Nifty's yeah, going to be blasting people. Yep, 19th through the 21st, Burbank. Yep. Yep. We'll be there. So Play April, Cloud9 first. April 19th through the 21st. All right. All right. And then we've got uh, Ultimate Weekend coming up the week after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's going to be here in uh, Dallas at the Allen Event Center. Uh, April the 27th or 28th. Uh, we m- There might be like one or two, literally one or two tickets left. Get so them now. If you wanted to go, <laughs> yeah. Like you have liter- probably like minutes to get these tickets. <laughs> so we're posting the audio of this today, right? Yeah. 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 So if you if you guys are listening to this today, the Envy PUBG team plays in uh, the Global Loot League Ooh, finals dope. in London starting tomorrow. Yeah. Starting tomorrow. You can catch them on Twitch. Uh, this big PUBG tournament, the biggest one in the world going on right now. So. They've been Root, rooting, rooting for the Envy PUBG boys. They get to show their stuff on the international stage. Interrogate going? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. So uh, we're pretty pretty excited about those guys to see what they can do mm-hmm. against all the international teams. That's awesome. We got some new Envy merch for you guys. If you haven't checked out the store yet, that's Envy or Shop dot gg N- slash Envy what? something no, of that. Envy no. dot Shop Give it to me, Mike. Dot gg. There, there you go. go. Shop dot gg slash Envy. No, what? God, <laughs> Jesus. Shop Listen to Justin. Envy. Listen to dot Justin. GG. There you go. How many, so whoever edits the video just <laughs> put all the iterations <laughs> of one. that URL and just <laughs> del- put it, <laughs> write it out, <laughs> delete, delete it, it. <laughs> write it out, delete it. Beep it. Mike goes, beep it. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> we'll, we'll get it. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get, get it. There we'll get there. Join the Envy Discord. I know this one. It's discord.gg slash Envy. We have a special queue up channel where you can request future guests. Um, ask questions to our guys. Um, so definitely check that out and engage with all of our fans. Um, anything else? I, I want to say one more time, check out the Fuel House <laughs> episodes from Jack in the Box. Those things are so fun and awesome. We basically turned the, the Fuel team into a Rick and Morty-like series. Yep. So watch it. It's super fun. It's yep. really ridiculous. Yeah, be sure to just Google more about the team at com.google. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. And, uh, you know, Hit us up on all our social media. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you as always for listening. Uh, if you are listening on iTunes, please leave us a review. That helps us out tremendously. Uh, and if you guys are watching this on YouTube, leave us a comment. Be sure to subscribe. Click the notification bell so you know when the next episode is out. If you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment below. Let us know who you'd like to see next. Until next time, this has been Q Up. <laughs>